So we found seven side hustles that will make you $500 a day as a digital nomad working from anywhere on this planet. Now, the best things first, it takes absolutely no experience to get yourself started with any of these seven side hustles. And to be fully transparent with many of these side hustles, you're able to earn north of ten dollars to $15,000 monthly if you focus on it for at least 24 months and you make the decision to actually take it serious. So you're about to discover all the essentials that make these seven side hustles work in your favor, the risk attached to it, how much demand there is in the marketplace and the levels of difficulty for beginners. So make sure you watch this video all the way till the end to exactly know which one of these seven side hustles will give you the best results so that you can get started making $500 a day as a digital nomad without any prior experience. And with that being said, let's dive right into it. All right, and the first business model that we're gonna look at today is affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing has beautiful leverage on time, which is very high because essentially once you got everything going and set up, it's just sending out links and you essentially make money. That's a very easy thing when it comes regarding to the time that you spent to execute and make sales with that one. I think it's also very versatile. You can do affiliate marketing in so many different ways. You can build websites that rank on Google, for example, with, with articles and then you could uh, drop your link or maybe you focus more on higher end items and do a little bit of a webinar thing maybe where you pitch a affiliate product at the end of, of a webinar or maybe on, the, on a call or you just do some referrals if you don't have huge audience for example that's what you can do it, it's, a, it's a very good business to get started with actually and generally speaking in regards to the timeline as you just mentioned like if you're starting out from scratch I think it is very realistically to say like if you you're really going from zero, you have no audience to like really being able to see results with the whole thing. And it takes time for, for building the audience. We assume like it's it's safe to say like six to 12 months is a good timeline to, to say, okay, like if you focus for six to 12 months on that, then you can see good results with affiliate marketing. Yeah, I think it's also very important to say that all of these business models, they have a certain amount of time to get to your first sale. And with affiliate marketing, you can have your first sale pretty fast because you can just recommend the product to a friend, for example, but to scale that up to multiple thousands of dollars a month, it's going to take some time and you need the audience for that. Also, in terms of startup cost, affiliate marketing is not free. You have to have um, some software, like, like to build a website, for example, maybe build a funnel or so. You also need to have a laptop. So I would say, from my experience, people who start affiliate marketing, they usually spend between two to three K to, to start this business. That's right. Absolutely agree on that. And like when it comes to demand, which is usually a big thing when we dive into the world of business, like how easy is it to get people to pay attention to what you're actually trying to sell and promote? And with affiliate marketing, there's a little bit of downside to that because usually that involves in promoting some sort of product, which is not your own, right? That's why it's affiliate marketing. But that also means that other people have easy access usually to promote the exact same thing. And you need to be a bit of a savvy marketer to really build an offer and craft something that is compelling so you really can stand out in the marketplace and uh, the question is obviously always like why should I buy from you so you need to be able to answer that question with whatever you're doing in the space and uh, yeah this is a bit of a of a downside in, in that regards to the high time leverage uh, that is a big upside right so the fulfillment with affiliate marketing is pretty simple because you don't have to fulfill anything you just market a product and once somebody signs up for for this product or for this program or for the course or whatever are you promoting then the person who is creating the product what we call the vendors they are doing all fulfilling for you so you just send out your link and someone buys something and you get your commission a big downside though is when someone takes a refund and the vendor is having maybe a shitty product or so then this will be deducted from your commission of course sure and uh, also when it the size of the audience right it's beautiful to send out the link or uh, promote the webinar or whatever it is essentially but who is actually gonna see that and receive that link or see that webinar and uh, that usually means you need to build this audience and that's why we said like a few minutes ago you have to probably take six to 12 months to actually build that size of audience to really be able to get some decent momentum with affiliate marketing you also don't need to do paid advertising to do that just like i mentioned you can just start out sending some links to your friends or so but to really get this going i also would recommend 
trying to build up the audience size and I would also put some money behind it um, in terms of advertising. And also, like um, we just mentioned a couple of times, like the competition is really high. You have to stand out amongst um, all of those other people selling the same product. And there's also some very good affiliates who even offer bonuses, for example, just to stand out of the crowd. Definitely. And I think on top, like when we look at, uh, generally speaking, at the risks, like what could actually go wrong? I mean, the worst thing that can happen is definitely like nobody's buying, right? So you, you're promoting something that everybody else is promoting. Your offer doesn't stand out. Maybe you're promoting the same offer that the audience has already seen. And just like you send something out and it's crickets, like nobody buys, you spent that time. And uh, I think that's the worst thing that can happen, right? So you're like having the downside with, with this risk and also like no, like the high competition. And as Sam just said, like somebody has a bad product, you're getting refunds and, and yeah, like everything going from that forward. In terms of earnings, affiliate marketing is quite interesting because we have completely across the board all of the commission types. There's, for example, the Amazon affiliate program where they pay you maybe like 5% and there are also like uh, vendors who pay you up to 100% depending on what kind of product this is. Usually I found that most affiliates, they get a commission of roughly $5 to $7 depending on what they're promoting. So this is maybe a good goal that you could keep in mind to, to aim for when you want to start affiliate marketing so that you can get maybe like a $70 uh, commission. Um, that's a good starting point. All right. And that being said, looking at all those facts and figures for affiliate marketing, I'd say we switch to our side hustle number two, which is becoming a content creator. And that means you're producing videos for YouTube or blog articles or pictures, reels, whatever it is for Instagram, TikTok, and all the other social platforms that are out there. And if we're fully transparent here in regards to the time leverage, that is kind of the opposite of affiliate marketing because you actually have to produce a lot of content and that's usually done by yourself and so that takes a lot of time that is definitely a downside here yeah and also when you're starting this whole content creation thing to build up a youtube channel for example it could take one two or even three years and most people who are starting out don't even get monetized but if they get monetized i've seen people doing it in four to six months maybe some take one year or two years completely random basically but i would suggest doing it if you want to start it to do it at least for 12 to 24 months if you're consistent and you will get there eventually you you will be monetized in the future then and what i typically see is that people get maybe like five to eight dollars per 1000 views so if you want to make let's say 3k or 4k with your uh, youtube channel you can do the math yourself on how many views you need a month in order to get to your desired income also the startup capital is quite heavy because you have to get all of this fancy equipment right all of the content creators say you don't need this equipment to start yeah that's right but in order to compete with all of the other creators who do buy all of this fancy equipment and put in more quality you have to level up so i would say you have to get at least a decent camera that's maybe a thousand dollars or so then some good lighting and of course a laptop and some software to edit everything and it's going to be at least like three maybe 4k that you need to invest in order to become a content creator yes and in regards to the demand uh, that that people actually consume your content. There is another downside here. As Sam just said, you have to compete with the other guys in the space. And that means there is a lot of competition. Everybody has, yeah, if you go for the cheap equipment, everybody has a smartphone, right? So that's like the benchmark, the low line benchmark. So if you want to stand out, you have to do things extraordinary. And uh, yeah, it's just not enough to be standard essentially, right? Yeah, and there are so many copycats these days. Once you have a video, that's hitting or you have a reel on Instagram or TikTok or something and it goes viral, be sure that there are going to be some copycats out there doing exactly the same thing that you're going to do. So there will be a lot of knockoffs. Yes. And when it comes to the fulfillment side of the whole content creator part, there is a lot of work that has to be done as well, right? You have to come up with ideas like doing research first, coming up with ideas, producing the whole thing. If it is video, if it is writing articles, if it is taking pictures, doing the editing, 
editing of those things, publishing it, optimizing it, and so on. There's a lot of work involved into that, aside from the big competition that we already have. In terms of audience size, it varies, but I would say you need a big audience in order to uh, make like three or four K a month. And you can do the math like I just said, but it takes time to build up this audience. And it's not just the subscribers that are mean, but more so the views that you get, your viewership. Because right now a subscriber is worth nothing really. Um, for advertising budget, I would say you don't need any budget. You can certainly boost your channel, your Instagram and your TikTok. You don't have to do that. It's just so when you want this little bit of extra push that you can do it, but it's quite expensive. And um, that's why I don't recommend uh, you starting out doing that. Maybe it's also an upside, right? Like if you have the audience size and you have the subscribers, it's actually, it becomes easier to, to get the reach, but until you're there. And then, uh, yeah, we, we come back to the risk uh, that are involved with the whole things. Like what could actually go wrong, which is uh, usually uh, something we tend to not look at when we talk about those things. Like we're super optimistic and looking at things and, and, and just see the, the, the good things. But here, like again, it comes back to a lot of time and effort that is in involved and as Sam you just mentioned in the beginning when we started uh, talking about is like you're a bit like I call it victim to the algorithm right it can go very well and it can go very very bad and if it goes bad which is the worst case you might wasted months uh, you're not getting views you learned a lot you spend a lot of money on equipment and uh, yeah you didn't get anything out of that have you ever seen these YouTube channels where there's like a hundred or two hundred videos and all of the thumbnails look the same and there's barely 50 views on this this sometimes happens and you have to be aware that not everything that you're going to publish is going to be successful because there's simply some topics that are not being searched for right definitely definitely additionally to mention here again the competition side of the whole thing so we have a lot of people being around here we have the whole youtube automation crowd that is also in the space now with ai and everything like which makes it even harder and more competitive and then if you want to talk about a specific topic or a niche you might actually need additional knowledge to to be able to produce something like if you want to go in for example a niche of a medicine space or something and you want to talk about health and stuff you might need to do research or have have uh, some sort of status or education in the space to be actually even taken serious when you talk about things because it's just like a certain level of sophistication required to to be able to do that and then we have the course creator. That's still a bit different from the content creator, but it's pretty similar, except the course creator is selling premium content, basically. And in terms of time leverage, it doesn't require as much as the normal content creator who puts everything up on social media, but it's still going to be like six months or so because you have to also build a little bit of an audience, not that big like a content creator, but you still have to have at least maybe like 500 or a thousand people on maybe an email list or so to sell your courses. And you also have to create the course itself so that's going to take up quite some time and if this is the first time you're doing that then it's going to take at least like four or six or maybe eight months in order to get your course to a level where it's selling and also where it's good enough so you don't get like hundreds of refunds or so once it's out there and once uh, you have created everything the good thing here is that the time leverage is, is pretty nice because you can automate everything basically right so so you have maybe the the sales video on their sales page you're sending some people on the sales page and it's live all the time right people can buy it always sort of passive income ish absolutely when it comes to startup cost with uh, selling courses this one is also not free you need softwares to like do the marketing like is said for example a funnel builder or something uh, you also need softwares to edit the videos of your course and uh, again coming back to like having a laptop having camera equipment uh, that allows you to to do those things so we would say it's roughly around three to four thousand that you need to to calculate in to be able to really successfully pull it off with uh, selling a course starting from scratch and when it comes to the demand side that is a topic for itself and we could talk a lot about that but to give you like an average it's we would say it's like medium ish because obviously you're going to fix a problem you're going to focus on something that is being solved it's not as attractive as, as something we will talk about later because people still have to do the solution themselves like they have to fix the problem they themselves they're just consuming the course they're getting information and then they have to implement themselves and that makes it like not super super attractive but it's okay and obviously people search in google or whatever 
for a solution and they might find you or they come through ads like definitely works in today's time and age. Yeah, in terms of audience size, advertising budget, you can do your own math on how much audience you need in order to make, let's say, five or six K a month or so. But generally speaking, to make this amount of money, you have to have quite a big audience because courses typically sell for, let's say, 297 US dollars. And typically a sales video is converting at maybe one, maybe one and a half percent. So you could, if you want to do like five or six K and just calculate it with these numbers, and then you can know how much you have to have in your audience in order to make this amount. And in terms of advertising budget, of course, you can scale this up to even six figures a month. That's what some people are doing. And of course, then the advertising budget can be huge. But I wouldn't recommend starting with a course in the beginning, because like I said, you can waste months and then not make a single sale, right? You can create the whole curriculum, record all of the videos, create all of this fancy marketing videos, ads and everything. And at the end, nobody buys. It could be. And you also need to be an expert in doing that. You can't just read a book on something and then think, okay, you know, I'm going to teach people rocket science or so. Yes, the next side hustle we're going to look at is the topic of e-commerce. And that is like, I'd say we can divide it into there's like the Amazon FBA side. There is the side you're having uh, your own shop. And uh, there is the side of having like a drop shipping service where you actually don't even have a, a storage. And uh, there are different aspects we're going to talk about in a moment. But in terms of time leverage, the beautiful thing with e-commerce is there is a high leverage on your time. Like you can automate a lot. You can automate the fulfillment. Uh, you can even like with the whole AI stuff, if you're like a bit uh, into that, you you can even automate that one and, and like the whole customer system or support. And uh, yeah, like there's a good leverage on time here. And uh, to build and pull something off, I'd say that definitely comes down to, again, which platform you're using. I think, uh, Sam, when we talk on drop, shipping that's very easy to do very quickly since uh, the product is there you don't have to like aside from the shop you actually don't have to build anything when it comes however to like amazon fba you have to produce the product you have to import it put it to the warehouse and uh, set everything up might uh, maybe do some marketing to get a good ranking and also the legal stuff you have to have the all the certificates you have to have legal papers done you need to have brand checks and all of the other things that waste months of time right i've seen people doing a product launch on amazon they start in year one and in month 16 or so they are finally live because of all those legal troubles that they have in the beginning yes yeah, so there is a wide range from like starting with drop shipping being able to set up a store having that go live and, and doing some sort of like reasonable revenue within like two three months maybe and then we have the amazon side as you just said like that goes up to 12 to 16 months yeah and i think that's the same with startup capital or what do you think for the startup capital, you can start maybe with, let's say, 1K-ish, but it can be also up to 15 or 20K, depending on what products you're going to sell. For example, in the Amazon FBA space, you have to buy multiple hundreds, if not thousands of products to put them in a warehouse where people can then ship them for you, basically. And this is going to cost you, of course. It's always going to be an investment. But if you choose, for example, the route of drop shipping, you have to have some software, maybe your laptop or so. And that's why I'm saying maybe be 1k-ish, 2k-ish. I recommend for all of these business models basically just 4k because you can also invest a little bit into some education that also helps. But yeah, for, for e-commerce, especially like Amazon FBA, you have to have at least 10 to 15k to start. Yes, and when it comes to demand, that uh, can go into both extremes, right? Either you have like a, a winning product that really hits home and you're going to do a lot of sales or it's like with many things, it's crickets. So you put it online you're going to make a sale or two or none at all. And it's just going to be there. And at worst, you, you got a, a lot of stuff in your warehouse. And now you have to deal with that too. But we're going to talk about that in a moment in, in the risk uh, section. Yeah, it can go both sides. Usually there is nothing in between, like either it hits home or... And for the fulfillment side of things, it's uh, pretty dang easy. Once this is set up, it's pretty much automated. You just have to put do some advertising, maybe check your Facebook ads or TikTok ads. Or if you're doing FBA, check your Amazon ads and that's basically it and for all of the other things in terms of fulfillment you can hire maybe a va or so a customer support and so that's one of the most automated business models of and on today's list basically in terms of audience size and advertising budget this is by far the biggest one in order to make tons of money with dropshipping or fba or so you need to have a big audience not one on social media but that you create from advertising basically so you have to spend 
a dollar to make one or two dollars, right? That's the whole business model. You have, you have a, your online shop or your FBA listing and then you run some ads through it. And then at the end, you're gonna make more money, hopefully, right? And in terms of risk, there's huge risks if you do e-commerce, of course, and especially if you do this, this wholesale Amazon FBA thing. You can just buy products and in the end, nobody is gonna purchase that from you. So you have maybe 500, 1,000, 2,000 products in the storage room that nobody's buying, but you still invested like 10 or 15K into these products, right? But do you also definitely gonna have the copycat side here? So people, like they will search for winning products, right? There are a lot of tools out there that help you, even if you start yourself, right? To find winning products, but everybody else can use them on you as well. And so once something works, usually there are very quickly copycats around. People gonna do the same and then the trend at some point ends and uh, you gotta go for the next one, right? And then it also comes down to like where you actually sell. Like, is it your own shop? Are you going on Amazon FBA? Like there's a platform fee. You definitely usually also have like a credit card fee for every transaction that is taken off. That's actually with most of these things, as long as you are taking a sale in any kind, right? That's coming along. And there's just like percentages that go away from your profit that you have to be aware of. E-commerce, usually people go out with these very high numbers, right? But that comes back to the advertising, right? A million dollar in e-commerce is usually not uh, an 80% profit margin, more like a 10% if it comes high, right? So uh, that is that. And then again, like with all the copycats and everything, we have the high competition. People are, there are a lot of people. It's easy to get started, especially like with drop shippings, like things like that. Everybody can set up a store and, and quickly start uh, sourcing some products from China or wherever you take them from and then get started with that. And you mentioned the big audience size, right? And that's really required here. Same with the advertising spend, because depending on what you sell, uh, it's the products are like maybe like five to seventy dollars here. So if you want to make like two, three, ten thousand dollars a month, you do have to go the volume route, and that just takes big audience size and a lot of advertising budget, as you just mentioned before. And next we have the coaching business, right? And the coaching business is one of our favorite one because you do have, generally speaking, good leverage on time. We have to be transparent here in the in the beginning. Like it takes some time to build the whole thing out. That it takes time. It's not ideal, not perfect. But once everything is done, the only thing or like the, the only time you're going to spend is in fulfillment. And there are even strategies to scale that and optimize that once time has come to do that. So long term, it gets better and better and better in regards to the time side. Yeah, and why we like it so much is pretty simple because you don't have to waste months, even years to build this whole thing up. You can start out with having no course, for example, and just do it more as a coaching consulting thing where people sign up for your coaching and then you one-on-one -on -one consult people or do group consulting sessions and then maybe later on create a course to automate it more. That, that's the beautiful thing about it. And in terms of the time that you need in order to do your first sale, usually it takes three months once you have the idea of I'm going to do this coaching business here in this particular niche. And really because of the high price ticket here, you just need one or maybe two clients a month in order to make a full-time living with this. And that's the beauty about it. Also, in terms of capital or startup costs, it's uh, usually in the middle. Of course, when you're having a coaching program, the quality needs to be way better than in a typical course or maybe on, on a YouTube or so. And that's why we recommend to invest at least five or six K into good camera equipment, a nice laptop to edit your videos or do your Zoom calls. And also you need some software for this. Of course, you need to have Zoom accounts, you need to build your website, you need to have a funnel, maybe a webinar or so. And this all adds up but still with one sale you can uh, recoup all of your investments easily next we speak about demand in the coaching space and it's not like a secret that this space is growing day by day and uh, that is very easy uh, to explain in comparison to like selling a course where the information is just like consumed and then it's like a do-it-yourself style here we have human guidance involved and that also allows you then for charging high prices which gives you then in comparison to the time spent like a really good net per hour uh, spent for the whole thing and uh, that also makes it attractive to buy because people like everyone can buy a book but most people will never implement and here we can support people and guide them and see where they struggle and find solutions especially when we start uh, a coaching business that is usually the case and it's very easy to fix and help people
people because you are there to essentially support them. And uh, that makes it also for the client side who pays this amount of money, a very appealing strategy to like solve a problem and go towards a solution. In terms of audience size, you don't need a big audience to make this work. Like I said, you just need one client that you sell maybe a 6K coaching program to, and then you just need one person basically to make full-time living. So I would recommend maybe doing a list in the beginning of maybe like a hundred people or so, and then constantly doing some content for them or so, and then you have, invite them on the call and you close them basically on the call and set your own. Um, coaching services. The thing with coaching though is you don't need to have a big audience, but you certainly can have one and it also helps you. And also you can put some gasoline in the fire and hit it home with advertising because you can go really big on advertising and then you have a lot of money to put into advertising because your ticket price is, is so high. Let's say for the $6,000, you can spend $6,000 just to gener generate one client. And that is huge. That gives you a huge advantage to all advertisers basically. But it comes also with a downside because you have to have, of course, expert status. And if you don't have this expert status as a coach, there will soon be exposed videos on the internet about you, negative reviews, and people won't get results, doing chargebacks, and having a chargeback on a $6,000 program, that's gonna be painful. Definitely. And then there is also to mention that worst thing that can happen and we see happening over and over and over again with the coaching business, people that start this thing first time business and so on which is actually closing the deal right like six thousand dollar is a wonderful ticket size right as you said one client a month and you're essentially good or like one two clients a month and you uh, that's very well like gives you like a very nice life to get started with in, in most uh, areas on this planet right if you're not able to close then that is like a problem and also what's here to say is uh, the fulfillment time right so it definitely takes some time and uh what also we've seen in the past a lot of people building like out the whole coaching program for like six months worst even up to a year they didn't do proper research they never closed the deal before and then everything is recorded and produced and perfectly done but never sold and no like nobody's gonna buy which is uh, really really bad at that point <laughs> And that is for all of those business models. If you don't know how to close, none of those is going to work for you. Of course, then because you're not going to make any money with, because nobody's giving it to you, right? And just to add a little bit here, I just said, okay, it really hurts if you have $6,000 refund. Of course, but typically customers who buy higher ticket items, they are more premium customers. They're a little bit easier to handle. And these are people who can afford to not do a refund basically. So the refund rates are typically out of all of those business models here, one of the lowest ones. Typically, like in e-commerce, you have maybe like a 5 to 7% refund rate. With coaching, you have more or something like a 0.5 or 0.8%, something like that. All right. Next one, we have the agency model. And here we have to say that like, obviously, agency means you're offering a service. You do something for the client. And in regards to the time spent here, this is one of the worst ones on the list we talked about today. It's just because of the matter of fact, you're doing all of the work. You need stuff if you want to scale later down the line. And in regards to, to time, that that's just the worst one, right? It definitely is good um, in regards to uh, you getting a high price again uh, because uh, yeah you you're taking over the work you you're gonna charge the client that and uh, also when it comes to the pull-off time is really good as it's very appealing to market this thing once you talk to somebody whatever kind of solution you offer to the marketplace is very appealing to say like don't worry i just gonna do it for you right so it's easy to get clients here we usually see people pulling that off in like a month or two once they decided on what they want to sell and uh, actually obviously you need to be able to to have uh, the expertise to actually deliver that. But that's another thing. We talk about that in the risk side. Yeah, go on. And in order to make your first sale, it's, it could be pretty fast. Like when you have a service that is in demand, for example, you could make your first client within a month and the ticket size in the agency is most of the time $1,500. So $1,500 for a sale. Uh, that's uh, the standard basically. And if you want to make like 5K or so, you need like three clients or so, right? Then we have the startup costs. Most people say to start an agency, it's free, but it is not free. I would argue against that because the, the startup cost is roughly maybe around 5K or so because you have, you have to have software, you have to have 
have a sales funnel set up in order to get new clients and in order to deliver depending on what service you have you have to also have software for that too then you have to have legion software and these this can be pretty expensive right or if you have a like a reels agency or so you still have to editing programs and then you have to have staff of course because if you start out you won't have any skills that's just matter of fact or if you say okay i'm gonna learn everything then you don't make money because you are focused on learning the craft so it's either or with the agency the demand usually is pretty high because it's done for you that means there will be always demand for this because people are lazy these days or maybe they don't have the time to do it right definitely definitely and when it comes to the fulfillment uh, this is as we said before a big part but uh, the beautiful thing is if you've done it right it's a lot of repetitive tasks that you're gonna see happening here so people like potential clients are always gonna look more or less the same if you do it properly with an agency and so it's like again you can easily hire stuff once you gain some momentum and uh, train them on that so it's it's not the worst but it definitely takes time and uh, as you mentioned before like with higher ticket side here and the, also the potential recurring revenue and people stay with you over time for example in a marketing agency you do not need a lot of clients so you also do not need a lot of audience to be able to pull that off and uh, in regards to advertising spend it definitely needs some if you're starting from scratch but in regards to the attractiveness of the service as a done for you as a full service as a I'm taking care of everything it doesn't take as much as a coaching because again like it's easier or like just more attractive and uh, you're gonna get client easier this way still we see the same things here in regards to the risks right you do need to know some kind of whatever you offer right so you need to have a certain expert status if you don't do the work yourself you still need to like kind of know like what it needs to actually put something together and make it happen because eventually even if you have a freelancer or something you're responsible for the result right so you do need to understand what is actually going on and it's the same with the with the coaching business you do need to be able to close a deal like if you cannot close clients no cash flow no cash flow no business and so we are back to square one you need to be able to close deals if you want to do that essentially with the agency it's not only that you're building the agency itself but it's more like depending on what kind of agency you have you're building multiple businesses at once if you have like a full service agency in marketing or so then you have to not ads for your own business you have to do it for all of your clients so that you have a cap of clients that you can take on of course you can hire that out but when you scale an agency for example it gets pretty expensive in the end like i've seen people who have been agencies with maybe two or three people like some friends starting this they ended up with 40 plus employees with a payroll a month of like 200k or so just to break even can you imagine how many clients you need for that or how much advertising spend you need in order to sustain those kinds of businesses it's quite heavy but definitely to say the psychological pressure that you're gonna have to make that over and over and that once something goes wrong like an ad account shut down or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> beware of that and uh, yeah just pay attention to those things as well once uh, you, you do those things a little bit longer and uh, the next one we're going to talk about is nomadic closing and this is also interesting if you're like especially starting out becoming a digital nomad as this is like really the key when it comes to closing deals and whatever you're going to build you need to be able to close deals to get money and, and cash flow actually happening to whatever business you choose from everything we talked about so far so this is very very important skill that everybody needs and all business models work to some degree right but if you cannot make a sale happen that's a problem right and when it comes to the time uh, to actually pull this off uh, or like the time leverage let, let's talk the time leverage first this is insanely high because when you're in the nomadic closing space essentially you're taking on a call at closing conversation to make a deal happen and that can be like one hour and you're making like 300 to 1500 in that hour and then you're good for the day go out and uh, go surfing or chill or whatever you want to do right so there is a high leverage on the, on the time spent here and yeah, let me quickly explain why there's such a high leverage and um, this is because you work with people like agencies coaching businesses or consulting businesses that have products that are 1500 2000 all the way up to 
you 16,000 or what have you for just one purchase. And then you get a commission on that, maybe 10, maybe 15, maybe even 20% of the ticket price goes directly to you, the nomadic closer. And this is why you can have this big time leverage basically of just investing one hour and closing a deal that's 16,000, getting 10% commission, boom, you just made $1,600 within just one hour. And this is the beautiful thing about it. It also doesn't take that much time if you're committed to make your first sale because you can focus on partnering up with someone who's already having a good sales process, for example. You focus on getting this partner. And then once you learn the script that they are providing you, you could make your first sale within one or two weeks. That's amazing, simply. If you wanna take this a little bit more chill, I say, you need about four weeks to pull this off. That makes sense. When it comes to the startup cost with this, uh, since you're probably watching this video on your phone and that's literally everything you need to be able to pull this off from scratch, we say here around, like it's probably around zero. You need an internet connection, obviously, but assuming you're having this right now as you're watching this video. Maybe a Zoom account. Maybe a Zoom account, right? Which is like $15 a month, something like that, right? Yeah. So it, it is is pretty low to compare to like buying fancy camera equipment with the other ones that we talk about that is definitely a pro point here you also don't need a laptop yeah yeah, you can do it on your phone, like uh, just having the conversation. And when it comes to demand, there is definitely high demand. We have a growing coaching business uh, scene. We have a growing agency business scene. And as we talked about in the risk section of those side hustles, the problem most people have, they are not able to close deals. They they are good at something. They may be good at marketing. They may be good at producing a video, creating a video for a company, but they're horrible in the closing part and struggle to make money or they actually got some initial momentum and now the, the business owner, him or herself, is becoming the biggest bottleneck to drive more revenue to the company and they don't have the time. Everyone has just 24 hours. So once they get to a certain point, they need somebody to actually take care of that. And that is where the nomadic closer comes in. And so there is a high demand. Every business needs such a person. The demand is actually so high because there's a new coaching business coming out each day each second probably hour i have no idea and the industry is quite big it's i think like 305 billion or something per year so imagine how many coaches there are you could just open instagram type in coach go through instagram and then just put your finger and then you have there you have one right you can partner with them in terms of fulfillment nomadic closing is amazing it's it's kind of like with the affiliate marketing thing you close the deal and then the coach the agency or the consultant is fulfilling the product or service for you you don't have to do anything else now you would say but sam you have still have to fulfill because you have to close but that's literally the same with all of those business models they all need to close and then on top they need to fulfill so you're just basically just closing with this one that's the beautiful part about it you don't need to have an audience for that because all those coaches consultants agencies they already have the audience for you they already did the job of congregating all of those people nurturing them making them go through a funnel and warming them up basically and then they just put it on your calendar and say hey at 2 p.m on wednesday can you close that person for me and you're like, yeah for sure i'm gonna do that right and you also don't need to have any advertising budget because once you find a partner you stay with this partner maybe you can have like two or three businesses that you close for but that's basically uh, the whole thing about it that makes it so beautiful no advertising spend and you don't need an audience and there is also quite limited risks here since there is not a whole lot of monetary or time investment required it's actually actually really only that if you want to become a nomadic closer that you cannot find a partner to actually close deals for and actually have those commissions that we we just talked about before 300 to 1.5k per deal is very common if you take the fact that all those coaching businesses and agency have high ticket offers where that is just pretty common to have these kind of commission size as well so yeah that is nomadic closing in a nutshell so if you want to discover our favorite side hustle, the one that we think is the best out of all of these seven, then you can watch our free Digital Nomad Masterclass. You can find the link for that one in the video description. All right, now that you know the best side hustles to become a digital nomad, you also need to know the common pitfalls you need to avoid at all costs when it comes to starting as a digital nomad. So click the video right here.